In today's video, I'm going to show you how I built the machine enclosure for my CNC machine. Welcome back to the DIY CNC Create series. If you've been following the series, you might remember that in part 3 of the series, I mentioned that I would start doing some test cuts on various materials in part 4. But before we get to that part, I think the machine enclosure itself deserves an entire video on its own. Now, as you know, CNC machining is a very violent, messy, and uh, noisy process. With 1.5 kilowatts of power in the current machine, it is three times as powerful as the Dremel CNC. So any accidents can potentially cause serious injuries to the operator or whoever is operating the machine. So therefore, the only sensible solution is to place the entire machine outside of the house with a proper enclosure. Now before I start diving into the build videos, let's talk about what we want out of the machine enclosure. Number one, operator safety. It needs to keep the operator safe from high-speed projectiles in the event of an accident. Number two, chips containment. It needs to keep all the mess within the enclosure or within the machine um, for easy collection and disposal later once the machining is done. Number three, rain and dust. As I live in the tropical country of Malaysia, the machine will be constantly exposed to rain and dust, so it needs to keep parts like ball screws, linear guide rails, and the electronics uh, protected at all times from these elements. Number four, noise. The enclosure also needs to help cut down the noise generated by the machine, as I have actually gotten some complaints from my neighbor when milling on the Dremel CNC. Okay, number five, cats. Yep, believe it or not, stray cats actually like to come into the house to sleep and poop on our lawns. So the last thing we want is to find a cat on the bed of the CNC machine or poop on the CNC machine bed. Let's start with the thought process on the overall design. The enclosure consists mainly of two components. Number one, the frame or the skeleton. Number two, transparent panels all around for the reasons mentioned earlier and also for visibility. For the frame of the enclosure, I decided to go with 2020 aluminum extrusions. Aluminum extrusions are extremely light and strong. They are extremely easy to cut and join together without any welding. And they also require no paint for rust prevention. And besides, I can easily add 3D printed brackets to mount my cameras for filming. So that's a win. As for the transparent panels all around, I have narrowed down to the two most obvious choices which are number one, acrylic, and number two, polycarbonate. And after doing some research comparing the characteristics of both materials, I eventually went with polycarbonate for its excellent impact resistance, up to 250 times the impact resistance of glass compared to acrylics 10 times. And unlike acrylic, polycarbonate can be drilled near the edges without cracking. So that's also one of the main reasons why I chose polycarbonate. Now if you look at the full 3D model here, rather than having the enclosure be a separate body from the machine that just covers over the machine, I designed the enclosure to be part of the machine and it is fully supported by the frame of the CNC machine using aluminium angle bars, making the enclosure unaffected by what surface it rests on. Now, having the enclosure fastened to the machine also makes handling both the machine and the enclosure together a lot easier. Now, as for the doors, instead of having hinge type swing doors that opens and closes, I designed completely removable panels on all sides that are held by four magnets each due to space constraint. If we take a look at the back of the enclosure, you will see the right section here is fixed and is non-removable. So this is where all the cables and pneumatic hoses from the electrical panel connects to the machine. Now on the bottom of the panel, 
the enclosure. I designed removable cheap collection trays that are made of aluminum angle bars and polycarbonate panels. So once the trays are filled with chips, I can remove the trays easily to dispose the chips or I can vacuum the chips off the trays without removing them. Now that you know how the design looks like, it's time to get to work and start cutting some metal. Let's go! So, as I was building the enclosure and doing the cable management for the CNC machine, I ran into a very interesting problem which I completely overlooked. Um, in order to have cables that I can easily connect and disconnect from the electrical panel to the enclosure, um, I needed a way for this cable which I connect to the electrical panel to the enclosure um, to be easily detachable uh, so over here I have a female GX16 aviation connectors which I intend to connect to or through the polycarbonate panel and on the other side I want to connect this GX16 cable on this side all the way to the electrical panel. Um, the problem was there is no easy way for me to hold on to the connections here. Since the female side of this connector connects to the electrical panel, meaning the male connector will 
connect to this side of the, the panel. Um, unfortunately, there is no easy way to attach this male connector to the polycarbonate panel. So ideally, I wanted something like this, which has a threaded body, which allows me to fasten this to the polycarbonate panel so I can easily detach the cables from both sides if I need to. This piece here is called a buckhead union which is used for pneumatics and I was actually looking on the internet for something equivalent um, but unfortunately I got no luck and the closest thing I could find uh, was just a GX16 aviation connector with a flange which doesn't really quite suit for this application. The first solution that I came up with was to use uh, big washers to act as flange which I hope can allow me to attach the male connector to the carbon polycarbonate panel but as you can see um, it is not long enough for the nut to fasten the male connector to the polycarbonate panel so this solution doesn't work since the washers didn't work uh, next I experimented with 3d printing parts and um, here you can see this is the first iteration this flange was supposed to go on to the GX16 um, male connector and over here you can see an improved version so right now this male connector sits on this flange here and there are a couple of uh, mounting holes for the flange to be mounted to the polycarbonate panel so I was uh, just hoping a simple half tube uh, like this could hold the other um, male connector unfortunately this looks quite flimsy so in this uh, next iteration I made something like this so this side connects uh, the, the connector the male connector sits on the flange and on the other side you have two half C tubes which will be used to clamp the polycarbonate panel in the middle and of course on the other side is just to hold the um, male connector so so far I'm pretty happy with this design so I'll solder up the wire on both sides of the male connector and see how well it works on the polycarbonate panel however I do see a potential problem with this solution and if this works well and if I'm going to proceed with this the pitch between these two flanges are probably not gonna fit since the spacing was not originally designed to include these flanges so that means probably I'll need to um, fabricate a new piece of polycarbonate panel and drill the holes all over again but yeah we'll see how it goes
In hindsight, coming up with the DIY mail-to-mail -mail connector was actually the most time-consuming part of the entire project. Uh, as there was a lot of desoldering and resoldering involved, and not to mention about the 3D printed parts, just to make it all work. If you have any alternatives that is more straightforward, that involves no soldering in this application, do let me know in the comment section below. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy watching the video and I hope the video gave you some ideas on how you can build your own CNC enclosure for the indie mail or your own CNC machine. And if you do, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. If you missed the first three parts of the series, I'll link them up here, here, and here. And I would like to end this video by wishing everyone Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Keno signing out.